We're back on InfoWars Nightly News and joining us to talk about an upcoming protest against the fluoridation of our water supplies is activist and PhD student Ashley Jessica, who many of you will remember from last year's TSA opt-out and film protest. Ashley, welcome to the show. Hi, Paul. Thanks for having me. Now, just to drill down into this quickly, for those who are new to the subject, give us an outline of what fluoride is and where people are most likely to encounter it in terms of food supply and water supply. Well, the most commonly added uh, type of fluoride is hydrofluorosilicic acid, and that is a chemical um, toxic waste byproduct of phosphate fertilizer production. So that basically, it accumulates in the smokestack scrubbers that are on top of phosphate fertilizer plants, and it is then dumped into the water supply. And it contains so many other toxic chemicals, such as lead, arsenic, mercury, and radioactive substances. So that's, that's where it comes from. And it's in our water supply, and it's very nutritious. Right. In fact, I, I watched a video from 2011. It was a tanker spill in Texas. And the news media was saying, you know, they're all there in their hazmat suits, cleaning up the hydrofluorosilicic acid as it melted through the concrete and then calmly announcing, oh, by the way, this is what we put in your water. So given that, given that we know what it is, that it causes all these horrible illnesses if people come in direct contact with it, tell us about the cancers and the other life-threatening goodies that have been linked with fluoride consumption. Right. I mean, the reason the, the scrubbers were added onto the smokestacks is because when it was released into the atmosphere, it was causing health adverse health effects and ad adverse environmental effects. It has been associated with an increased risk of bone cancer, thyroid dysfunction, kidney dysfunction, skeletal and dental fluorosis, endocrine dysfunction, arthritis, and so many other adverse health consequences. Just, just, yeah. And that's all in Harvard studies, peer reviewed studies. You've read them all recently, haven't you? Yeah, I've been reviewing the research quite a bit. Um, there was a Harvard study that came out recently that found an inverse relationship between fluoride consumption and IQ. Uh, it was an analysis of 27 different studies relating consumption of artificially fluoridated water to IQ, and they found about a seven-point difference between communities that had high fluoride concentrations and low fluoride concentrations. And a study even came out in 2011, which found that even at low concentrations of fluoride, uh, there are still negative consequences in terms of IQ. So even at low fluoride concentrations, it, it can still adversely affect IQ. In fact, there was a new study I read yesterday by European researchers, and it detailed how IQ in Western nations over the last century has dropped by 14.1 points. And if you actually look at it, that's more likely to be nearer 30 points because a separate study which came out today said that when they added iodine to salt uh, about 80, 90 years ago, that boosted IQ by 15 points. So in fact, whereas we should have had a boost in IQ over the past 100 years, we've had a 14.1% decrease. And as you mentioned, these Harvard, these other studies are directly linking that with fluoride consumption. So it's not only the health effects, it's the IQ reduction that people are concerned about. In fact, there was a quote that I wanted to refer back to, which was, you know, they talk about, oh, fluoride, they're putting poison in the water supply. There's this whole Dr. Strange love pejorative thing about crazy paranoid conspiracy theorists. But U.S. Air Force Major George R. R. Jordan who was a U.S. Soviet liaison officer in the 50s, said this, quote, using the fluoride in the water supplies in their concentration camps, he's talking about the Soviets, to make the prisoners stupid, docile, and subservient. So the Soviets admitted to doing it. The Nazis, if you read the crimes of I.G. Farben, admitted to doing it. And now it's in our water supply. So I guess, Ashley, if it's good enough for the Soviets and the Nazis, then it's good enough for America. It's just insane that it's being added in. I mean, even at low concentrations, they found that a one milligram per liter increase in urinary fluoride, fluoride found in, in, in someone's urine, was associated with a 0.6 decrease in IQ. It's just insane it, to me that it's continued to be added into the water supply. And it's cumulative because we know it's in, it's not just in the water supply, it's in hundreds and hundreds of foods. 
it's cumulative. Right. It builds up over a lifetime. It's not as if you're going to have a drink of tap water and you keel over and die. It builds up gradually. But then we get the, you know, the flip side of the propaganda, which is this prevents tooth decay. In fact, if you look at the actual studies, there's no real evidence for that, is there? No, a study came out in 2009 which found that there was no relationship between the amount of fluoride ingested and tooth decay. And the largest U.S. study published in the Journal of Dental Research found that, it found that um, there was a gain of 0.6 of a surface of a tooth for those drinking fluoridated water. And that was not a significant difference. So the research really does not fact, support the notion that fluoride is good for your teeth when it's ingested. And then the mere fact that fluoride has been in the United States water supply in the, the vast majority of major cities for 60 years. It hasn't in Europe, yet tooth decay in both Europe and the United States has declined equally. So that suggests yeah. it's got nothing to do with fluoride whatsoever. While on that subject, uh, you've got 60% of the US population drinking fluoridated water residents of 46 of the nation's 50 largest cities in America drink this, yet 97% of the people living in Western Europe do not drink fluoridated water. Why do we see this huge discrepancy between the two continents? Well, in Europe, many of the European countries have acknowledged the adverse health effects, and they're against forcefully medicating the water people via the water supply without their informed consent. When you add a medication into the water supply, you cannot control how much each person is getting. And everyone has a different physiology. People have different health concerns, and so they're going to react to it differently. So adding it to the water supply is wrong on so many levels, and the European countries have acknowledged that. And even in Canada, you know, we have, we are stopping water fluoridation. Uh, so many cities have abandoned the practice. Windsor stopped adding it to the water, Calgary, Waterloo, and we're hoping that Toronto is going to be next. And the amazing fact is, U.S. citizens drink more artificially fluoridated water than the rest of the world combined. Now we've, we've seen victories, we've, we've also seen complaints about the water supply being equated with terrorist threats in some areas of America. So whereas in Europe we've seen generally a lot of success when citizens groups try to get fluoride out of the water, if it is in there, it's still quite rare in Europe. But in America there's still a huge push to, to keep it in the water supply. I mean what do you think the agenda is? Is it just financial for financial reasons or is there another agenda behind that? It's really hard to say. It's hard to say if people genuinely believe all of the faulty research that's been parroted over the years or if there is some kind of other agenda or if it's financially motivated. The point is that the science is on our side. The scientific literature shows that it's very, very hazardous to health, that it does not improve our teeth and that it needs to go. So I mean what do we do about it? You're organizing this protest in September called Unfluoridate Me. Uh, tell us when and where that's going to take place. Yes, that's going to be taking place September 21st in Toronto. So if you are from Toronto, please join the Facebook page. It's called Unfluoridate Me. And go to our website, which is nfluoridetoronto.com. We have a petition up there. We're just trying to get as many signatures as possible, as much support for this as we can, so that we can get city council to put this issue back on the table and we can have the opportunity to present all of the research to them. And hopefully they will take it out of the water once they realize how hazardous it can be. So is, is Toronto fluoridated at the moment then? Yes, it is. And Florida Canada is. in general is much like the US, I imagine. We're not, we're not as fluoridated as the US. I think we're at about 30%. Like I said, a lot of cities have abandoned the practice in recent years. So we're heading in the right direction. You know, when Dr. Paul Connick came to speak in Toronto, he said that if we can get fluoride out of the water in Toronto, this can be the catalyst for the rest of Canada. And then the US will pretty much be alone with, with water fluoridation and maybe then they can wake up and, and, and question, you know, why, do, why does the rest of the world uh, not do this and their teeth are still fine? And of course, people in their own cities, we encourage to, you know, create their own protests around the same date and have marches in major cities in the US as well. Give us that website that would, once more in closing. Yeah, that would be awesome if other people could join and create their own fluoride protest for that same day. The website is nfluoridetoronto.com. 
And if you want to get in touch with me at all about any of this, um, you can tweet at me at Ashley Jessica. Okay, we'll definitely be revisiting this issue as the protest draws nearer. Ashley Jessica, thanks for joining us on InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you. Thank you. So we hope everyone will go and support Ashley with the website endfluoridetoronto.com, that protest against fluoride coming up in September. Recapping our top headlines tonight on InfoWars Nightly News, Russia orders snap drill of missile forces. Again, the Russian military buildup continues as we're, we're all distracted by the Zimmerman case and the royal baby. U.S. intel committees approve arming Syrian rebels, top general warns of costs. They have the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Dempsey, warning that this is going to cost a billion dollars a day, potentially, not to mention the lives on top of that. Then we had photos, Obama-backed Syrian rebels ransack Christian village. Again, shocking photos exclusive to Infowars.com, underscore how your tax money is going to arm radical jihad extremists in Syria. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. And if you like what we're doing, then support us by becoming a PrisonPlanet.tv member. Of course, you've got, you'll get exclusive subscriber access to content before it goes up on YouTube. The daily video stream of the Alex Jones Show, which is exclusive to subscribers. Uh, speeches, special events, behind-the-scenes footage, and much more. The new Mind Control documentary, which is getting rave reviews, State of Mind, is also available in high quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. And I'd invite you to um, buy the Blu-ray and the DVD of State of Mind, which is now available. So one subscription, again, can be shared with 11 people. Uh, you can give out the passcode to as, as many as 11 people. They can all log into the same account. So you save money. You support our media operation and spread the truth by becoming a subscriber at prisonplanet.tv. That's it for this edition of the show. We'll see you next time on InfoWars Nightly News. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show.